Hi guys, um, this is Dr. Kate Egan, and I am your uh, biology 200 pharmacology instructor. <clears throat> I know we're going to meet tonight for the first time, and I wanted to really quickly give you a brief orientation to the Canvas site for those of you who haven't used Canvas. So I'm switching to the student view on my screen because I forgot to do that. Okay, so when you log into your Canvas site, you should come um, up on this first page, which is the home page. So some of you may have taken hybrid classes or online classes before. Others of you may have not. So I just want to set a little bit aside of t set a little bit of time, pardon me, aside to help you navigate this site. I'll show it to you in class tonight as well, but sometimes people miss the first class or they just forget where things are located. So I just wanted to show it to you. It's a little easier when you can do it from your own house. All right, so this is the home page. You can see our little title up there. Um, <clears throat> the course is divided into 10 units, 10 modules. In each of these units, you're gonna find all the information that you need. Um, there's a course orientation module in that. We'll go to that really quick and I'll show it to you. Because this is a hybrid class, there are some things I wanted to make sure you guys got to see. This is just a little letter that you may have already read that gives you an introduction to the class. These can this Canvas guide gives you like some troubleshooting for Canvas, which is helpful. Um, you know, these are this will tell you about your computer and technology requirements, communication with me, including my email. Um, drop, participation and drop policy. Because we meet every week, we are going to take attendance, and attendance is mandatory. I mean, if you miss one or two, it's not that big of a deal, but we will be doing stuff in class um, <clears throat> and talking about some things in class that you might not be able to get on the recorded version of the, um, the recorded videos. So you're going to want to be there, and then um, if, if you don't attend for the first two weeks, I'm required by law to drop you unless you have communicated with me that you are not attending for some other reason. A couple people have communicated with me telling me they're going to miss tonight's class. That's okay, as long as I have that communication. But if there's no communication and no attendance in the first two weeks, we're required to drop you. I do try to keep my eyes on whether or not people are attending or submitting their work online or um, taking the exams, etc. And, and if it's fairly obvious to me that somebody has is not attending, um, I'll try to drop them before the drop date, but you have to kind of keep your eyes on those dates yourself. Those dates are posted on your syllabus. Um, if you're not attending, don't don't rely on me to drop you. So um, if you have no intention of completing the class, as soon as you've just made that decision, go ahead and drop yourself. If you st are still enrolled after the drop date passes, then I'm required to give you a grade, whatever that grade would be. And I have no control over that. Uh, there's no way. Uh, there's no way I can 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 give you a W after the W date has passed, and there's no way that I can withdraw you um, after the drop date has passed. And, and that's the same with all of your other classes as well. So it's good policy to just you know take the time to drop yourself if you're not attending. Um, and then there's some other you know things. We're not going to be doing a lot of discussions on online per se. We, you will be you will be um, submitting. Some doing some online assessments, um, but we're not going to do a lot of discussions. So um, this discussion etiquette is not necessarily that important to our class, but I left it in there as well. All right. Um, so there are two things that I would like you to do. One is this guidelines for success, which just basically is an opportunity for you to read through the syllabus and you know agree that you know you kind of have a an idea of what this what part of me is expected of you. Once you submit that, you will receive two points. So those are like two free points. So I would definitely suggest that you do that. Um, the the survey is up right now, and I'm going to leave it up for two weeks. So I'll leave it up until the um, they're called, it's called the census date, which will be two weeks from, oh, two weeks from this Friday. So that's when it will disappear. So make sure you take just a few minutes. It won't take long for you to do that. That, that as another way for me to say, oh yeah, this person has been in the class, etc. And then there's the student introduction. I would like you to, let's click on it and see what it, if it opens for us. I would like you to introduce yourself. Um, one, it helps me. And that goes for when you set up your Canvas profile. Also, um, if you put a picture of it, of yourself or of something that, you know, is, 
that you like, your cat or your dog or whatever. Sometimes it's um, helpful for me to see a visual, like if someone's emailing me, um, especially pictures are most helpful, but sometimes people don't want to put their picture up on, on canvas. But, you know, that helps me to kind of get a little bit more familiar since we only spend an hour together and it's kind of a big class. Um, I like to be able to put faces with names. I'm better with na with faces than I am with names, so it helps me to kind of link you together. And then it's also a great way for other people to kind of get to know you a little bit, um, especially if you have any experience that's applicable to the class. Like we have a pretty varied student population in this class, and we have people who have already have degrees. We have people who are already nurses. We have people who are trying to become physicians, PAs nurse practitioners, there's a whole bunch of people. And, and then we have a lot of pre-pharmacy students and uh, many people work in pharmacies over historically over the year. I've, ha I've had some drug um, reps in the class. So if there's anything about you that you know is applicable to the class, if you put that in your introduction, um, it's a good way for me to know kind of what kinds of students I have. And it's also a good way to kind of reach out to other people and especially people who are um, looking for study groups, I, I, especially for pharmacology, because it's a lot of memorization. I don't. I'll talk about this tonight, but I'm. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I don't, I'm not a firm believer in like memorizing lists of drugs. I don't. I think it's a waste of brain space. But there, there is. This is going to draw heavily on your knowledge of physiology, and you will be doing some memorization as well. So, as, but the, one of the best ways to study this, this for this topic is to do it in a group. So I would highly suggest that you form a study group. And if you're interested in forming a study group, you can include that in your um, student introductions. And as you are seeing other students' introductions, you can sort of see who's looking for that and maybe um, reach out to them via email or face-to-face -face contact. Always nice as well. Okay. Um, so that's that. The other thing I want to show you is how this is organized. So when we look at these modules, they're, developed, they're, they're all available for you now, and they are all um, grouped by unit. So there's a couple things in here that you're going to want to know. So these, this being a hybrid class, there's a lot of content that you're going to have to get do on your own online. And how I have done that is I've made these lecture videos. Every unit has a different number of videos depending on the length of the unit. I try to keep them reasonably length, a reasonable length, but I did go a little crazy on a couple of them. So these things, ideally, you would watch these videos before you come to the class that we're going to discuss this stuff. Because then what I do in the lecture is I kind of summarize stuff pretty quickly. Um, you know, things that are traditionally challenging, um, but it it's really going to be the most beneficial for you if you're, um, you know, familiar with the material. So you're going to want to watch these videos. These PowerPoint files here, these guys are basically these same files you find here, but without any audio. And the other thing that these files are essentially is as as a, um, pardon me, is an. What am I trying to say? These files are basically the same information is basically the same information that you have in your textbook that little required textbook that I have at the bookstore which is like 25 bucks or whatever these files the reason why I'm emphasizing this is these files are locked you cannot print them and that's because of some copyright issues um, and you shouldn't need to print them because you have that book Right. The book, it will cost you way more to print these files than it will be for all 10 units because there's a lot of pictures and a lot of stuff um, than, there, than it would be to just buy the book. All right. So those are locked. They're locked on purpose. This file here, the unit one live lecture, that's where we, those are, those are the presentations that I'm going to cover in our weekly lecture, live lecture in forum two. So these ones even though I do have some stuff I probably shouldn't share in them, but those ones are printable. You can print them, you can download them, you can bring them on your tablet, you can, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do with them. But for those of you who like to have a copy of the stuff that we're doing, which I recommend, you know, because you can write on it, you can bring those with you. So, so again, these videos you're going to watch, 
if you're watching these videos, you don't need to read these two because they're the same, right? They just have no voice. If you can't stand the sound of my voice for another minute, you can read these and skip the voice. You know, obviously I'm not just reading them. There's other things I'm saying, hopefully that is helpful. Um, all right, so that's that. And then the other thing that you should have here is an assessment. For some reason, they're not showing up. Um, I'm going to have to find out why they're not showing up, but you, we should have a link to an assessment, a unit assessment for each of these. And for some reason, it's not here in the student view, so I'll check that out right now. But for each unit, there's, there's going to be a, a 10 point um, assessment. And you're going to want to do that ideally before you come to lecture, but definitely before you take your exam. You're allowed two attempts at each of these assessments. Um, some students like to take them first, like after they first studied to see how they did and then study some more and then take it again. Other students like to take the do the first time and then wait before the test and do them again. Some people like to do them the first time and then wait before the final exam and do it again at the final exam before the final exam since it's an accumulate cumulative exam. You have lots of options with that. The key is you have to complete them before the last day of the semester. Um, so I believe there's such a close at 7 p.m. or pardon me, yeah, the end of our class on the last day of the semester, which if I remember correctly is May 24th. All right, so I think that's about it. Um, there will be a hand, I'm gonna add, the Canvas situation is kind of new, but I'm gonna add um, on this home screen, <clears throat> I'm going to add a little click link here for any handouts and assignments. That will be where your exam reviews are, your homework assignments that you're gonna turn in to me are and um, any other pertinent documents, I'll put a link here on this front page. So I think that should do it. Um, oh, one more thing. If you're having any issues with your Canvas, you can click on this link, and that's the, G the GWC Help Desk. They're super great there. They will troubleshoot all kinds of things, so don't hesitate to call them or email them. All right, I'm going to, I'll go over all this again tonight with you in class, but I just wanted to kind of navigate through it with you while you're all sitting in front of a computer. And um, I think that should do it. We'll see you tonight.